God is more concerned with conforming me to the likeness of his son than leaving me in my comfort zones. God is more interested in inward qualities than outward circumstances, things like refining my faith, humbling my heart, cleaning up my thought life and strengthening my character. Nothing is a surprise to God, nothing is a setback to his plans, nothing can thwart his purposes, and nothing is beyond his control. I want to stay in the habit of glancing at my problems and gazing at my Lord. Yes, I pray that my pain might be removed, that it might cease, but more so, I pray for the strength to bear it, the grace to benefit from it, and the devotion to offer it up to God as a sacrifice of praise. Faith isn't the ability to believe long and far into the misty future. It's simply taking God at his word and taking the next step. God uses suffering to purge sin from our lives, strengthen our commitment to him, force us to depend on grace, bind us together with other believers, produce discernment, foster sensitivity, discipline our minds, spend our time wisely, stretch our hope, cause us to know Christ better, make us long for truth, lead us to repentance of sin, teach us to give thanks in time of sorrow, increase faith, and strengthen character. The weaker we feel, the harder we lean on God. And the harder we lean the stronger we grow. Real satisfaction comes not in understanding God's motives, but in understanding his character, in trusting in his promises, and in leaning on him and resting in him as the sovereign who knows what he is doing and does all things well. Sometimes God allows what he hates to accomplish what he loves. I'd rather be in this wheelchair knowing God than on my feet without him. This is the only time in history when I get to fight for God. This is the only part of my eternal story when I am actually in the battle. Once I die, I'll be in celebration mode in a glorified body in a whole different set of circumstances. But this is my limited window of opportunity, and I'm going to fight the good fight for all I'm worth. As a matter of fact, God isn't asking you to be thankful. He's asking you to give thanks. There's a big difference. One response involves emotions, the other your choices, your decisions about a situation, your intent, your step of faith. Contentment has an internal quietness of heart that gladly submits to God in all circumstances. Most people wish they could erase suffering out of the dictionary. Today's culture of comfort and instant gratification has no patience for suffering, most people want to drug it, escape it, divorce it, do anything but live with it. What an encouragement to realize that God has reserved you and me for a special task in his great work. In his hands we're not only useful, but priceless. My wheelchair was the key to seeing all this happen, especially since God's power always shows up best in weakness. So here I sit, glad that I have not been healed on the outside, but glad that I have been healed on the inside. Healed from my own self-centered wants and wishes. Nothing is a surprise to God, nothing is a setback to his plans, nothing can thwart his purposes, and nothing is beyond his control. His sovereignty is absolute. Everything that happens is uniquely ordained by God. Sovereignty is a weighty thing to ascribe to the nature and character of God. Yet if he were not sovereign, he would not be God. The Bible is clear that God is in control of everything that happens. It is a glorious thing to know that your Father God makes no mistakes in directing or permitting that which crosses the path of your life. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is our glory to trust him, no matter what. Even at the cross, God permitted what he hated, the unjust and agonizing death of his own precious son, in order to accomplish something, he prized above his own son's cruel death, that is, salvation for a world of sinners. So, the world's worst murder becomes the world's only salvation. When we hurt, God doesn't always give us lots of words, he gives us the word, 
the Word made flesh who is intimately acquainted with our grief and suffering. That's what helps the most. Heartache forces us to embrace God out of desperate, urgent need. God is never closer than when your heart is aching. He has chosen not to heal me, but to hold me. The more intense the pain, the closer his embrace. Each one of us is God's special work of art. Through us, he teaches and inspires, delights, and encourages, informs, and uplifts all those who view our lives. The best we can hope for in this life is a not whole peek at the shining realities ahead. Yet a glimpse is enough. It's enough to convince our hearts that whatever sufferings and sorrow currently assail us aren't worthy of comparison to that which waits over the horizon. The greatest good suffering can do for me is to increase my capacity for God. We will stand amazed to see the top side of the tapestry and how God beautifully embroidered each circumstance into a pattern for our good and His glory. The Christian faith is meant to be lived moment by moment. It isn't some broad, general outline it's a long walk with a real person. Details count, passing thoughts, small sacrifices, a few encouraging words, little acts of kindness, brief victories over nagging sins. Perspective is everything when you are experiencing the challenges of life. True, God hates Alzheimer's, spinal cord injury, mental illness, autism, and the rest, these conditions are all symptoms of the fall. Yet he permits these things to accomplish something far more precious in our lives, patience, endurance, compassion for others who hurt, and refined faith and trust in God, to name a few. God's purpose in increasing our trials is to sensitize us to people we never would have been able to relate to otherwise. God doesn't just give us grace, he gives us Jesus, the Lord of grace. Amazing, isn't it, that our prayers can move the very heart of God who created the universe? Jesus went without comfort so that you might have it. He postponed joy so that you might share in it. He willingly chose isolation so that you might never be alone in your hurt and sorrow. He had no real fellowship so that fellowship might be yours, this moment. This alone is enough cause for great gratitude. If you had never known physical pain in your life, how could you appreciate the nail-scarred hands with which Jesus Christ will meet you? The truth of the matter is, Satan and God may want the exact same event to take place, but for different reasons. Satan's motive in Jesus' crucifixion was rebellion, God's motive was love and mercy. Satan was a secondary cause behind the crucifixion, but it was God who ultimately wanted it, willed it, and allowed Satan to carry it out. And the same holds true for disease. Suffering is arguably God's choicest tool in shaping the character of Christ in us. A broken life in the hands of God is ripe for blessing. The Psalms wrap nouns and verbs around our pain better than any other book. Suffering provides the gym equipment on which my faith can be exercised. One of the most wonderful things about knowing God is that there's always so much more to know, so much more to discover. Just when we least expect it, he intrudes into our neat and tidy notions about who he is and how he works. Love is extravagant in the price it is willing to pay, the time it is willing to give, the hardships it is willing to endure, and the strength it is willing to spend. Love never thinks in terms of how little, but always in terms of how much. Love gives, love knows, and love lasts. There's a big difference between feeling thankful and giving thanks. One response involves emotions, the other, your will. Trusting God has nothing to do with trustful feelings. I had to be healed of my desire to be healed. No other religion, no other, 
promises new bodies, hearts, and minds. Only in the gospel of Christ do hurting people find such incredible hope. Whether you send an email, tell your spouse in person, write a letter, talk over the phone, or write a quick note, remember that what you say today has the capacity to transform the countenance and the character of the most important person in your life, your spouse. God wrote a book on suffering, and its name is Jesus. Most of the verses written about praise in God's word were voiced by people who were faced with crushing heartaches, injustice, treachery, slander, and scores of other difficult situations. Like art, like music, like so many other disciplines, prayer can only be appreciated when you actually spend time in it. Spending time with the Master will elevate your thinking. The more you pray, the more will be revealed. You will appreciate not only the greatness of prayer, but the greatness of God. We've got to remember that the core of Christ's plan is to rescue us from sin. Our pain, poverty, and broken hearts are not his ultimate focus. True, he cares about these things, but they are merely symptoms of the real problem. When life is rosy, we may slide by with knowing about Jesus, with imitating him and quoting him and speaking of him. But only in suffering will we know Jesus. Maybe the truly handicapped people are the ones that don't need God as much. Deny your weakness, and you will never realize God's strength in you. Life becomes inspiring, not in spite of the problems and the hard hits, but because of them. My weakness, that is, my quadriplegia, is my greatest asset because it forces me into the arms of Christ every single morning when I get up. Only God is capable of telling us what our rights and needs are. You have to surrender that right to Him. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.